Today what we're um, concentrating on is more of um, protein analysis. And well, why do we have to do a protein analysis? In this particular case, at Lucy's restaurant, somebody was either poisoned or somebody um, actually had an allergic reaction to something they ate that they shouldn't have been allergic to. And so it's suspected that maybe they were using a cheaper fish in the crab meat and selling it as crab meat, a crab meat dish. And this is something that can potentially happen at a restaurant. Okay, someone is poisoned, there was something in the food, an analysis has to be done, a forensic analysis, which means we have to go in and look at what these foods were, what chemical components are in these foods, and these analyses can be done biochemically in the forensics laboratory. And this is the type of thing that gets done. We can look at the different types of meats, analyze the proteins in those meats, compare them to what they're supposed to be to see whether they were tainted. Okay, and that's pretty much what today's lesson is and what they're doing today. We're going to sample all the, only the crab? No, we, we suspect Lucy might have been tainting all her fish samples. Okay, yeah. so we're going to take some fish samples and do a protein gel Electro electrophoresis. Misha, tell us what that is. Well, it's um, an apparatus where mm -hmm. you like take different fish samples and run it on a gel. Okay, we're just gonna take that fish, throw it on yeah. the gel. And <laughs> yeah, and um, oh well, we have to um, extract DNA from um, the mussels. Well, then um, we're gonna extract yourself. protein. Yeah, protein from yeah. the mussels. Okay. Yeah, of the fish. Okay. What is muscle? Yeah. Protein. Protein. Well, protein. Yeah. Protein. You know, with protein. Actin and myosin, okay, <laughs> just like Dr. Actin and Mr. Myosin. Okay, so we're going to extract these proteins. And well, if all fish have the proteins, won't everything look the same? How will we be able to? Basically, buy? this program is like a joint program with John Jay. So we are recruiting students for forensics. So these students basically have a uh, dual degree. They would finish their associates here and they would directly be transferred to John Jay. All they have to do is maintain a GPA of um, 2.5. So basically this workshop is a way to train them when they go into John Jay that they are not like, you know, they shouldn't, it shouldn't be said that BMCC students are in good, so they're like more trained, they're, they're not. BM, uh, John Jay just wants us to train them in biology and chemistry. We do offer them a little bit more of forensics in this. So they are trained, I mean, the biology that they learn, they learn how to apply it for forensics. Once they get in, this is from a um, Title V CCRAA grant. What is CCRAA? It's College Cost Reducing Activity Act, so Access Act, I'm sorry. And that's basically to improve Hispanic um, and um, minority population in the science and STEM education. So based on this particular grant and this uh, collaboration with John Jay, we plan to recruit more students in the science fields, the STEM fields rather, and have them um, and have them transfer to four-year schools. I mean, you know, we, uh, what we are trying to monitor in this is make sure that uh, we recruit um, as many students and we also retain them. So the purpose of uh, this grant is to make sure that we have the students who are uh, trained and then they don't drop out. They're not, you know, many times they just disappear. We want to make sure that they transfer to a four-year school and they continue on with their graduation. So that's part of it. And uh, for part of this grant, what we are doing is we are doing two things to help that retention. One is this workshop, which, which we do every summer. Plus, we also have what's called an immersion module. And we strongly advise all students to take that immersion module. It's like over and above. They don't have to pay any fee for that. There's no cost for that. But it's like reviewing the whole concepts with them one more time of biology, chemistry, and math. So by the time they go to John Jay, hopefully John Jay or any other four-year school, they'll be more trained than other, other students. My major is science, and I love chemistry. And a lot of the things we do, it's going to help me later on when I'm developing my major for there. Yeah, we do a lot of things, a lot of different things. We incorporate biology, chemistry, very various fields. Um, then it's a forensic science workshop, but we do a lot, and you learn a lot, and you learn techniques and how to do different things. Like I just learned how to make this gel from scratch, whereas towards the beginning of the um, workshop, we were using gels that were already made. But these now I know how to make them for future reference. I know all about PCR and everything, the steps, how to replicate DNA. 
I am involved in this workshop, not so much the forensics element of it, but the microbiology aspect of it is fascinating to me. The um, DNA extraction, isolation, <laughs> transformation, all of that is really extremely interesting. I am pursuing a degree in environmental science and I ultimately want to study soil samples and kind of work on soil remediation. So I'm trying to take what I learned here and you know, eventually incorporate it into my bigger. All right, but before you do that, we'd really like to get started on the DNA gel. So I just checked that group and I took out their teeth for them. When I say their teeth, of course not their teeth, the gel comb. All right, there's a trick to taking out the gel comb. It's, you'll find that it's quite firmly put in there because now the agarose has solidified. You are gonna pull it up very gently, straight up. Don't wiggle backwards and forwards, don't wiggle from side to side because you'll break the wells. You are just gonna <coughs> gently and consistently pull your comb straight up. You need to hold the two little handles Press down on these with one hand and pull the teeth straight out with the other hand. Well, the interesting right? thing about the forensics workshop is that actually I happen to be one of the students that didn't watch CSI or any of these fabulous shows that you hear. It's all glamorous, you know, it's like choice cases for those people who are really serious about it. But really, it's deep down hard work. You may end up in a lab somewhere, in a basement. You may, you know, it depends. But you, the fact is, is that it's not all glamour and glitz. Let's just be real. There's hardcore science. Because you're dealing with people's lives, you know, you're, you're, you're helping towards a particular case to find a concrete answer. And that's where forensic science comes in to play with that. Um, the course itself is excellent as far as the learning potential. This intensive training that was for six weeks is awesome. It's not just all book, it's not all just talk and lecture. You're actually doing the work. You're working the case to see it to its completion. And the students that are here, very good students, all science students, interested in forensics and the program is is sort of uh, the stepping stone to get into the John Jay program, forensics program there. These students have all taken at least biology one, which is an upper level biology. They had to have passed that course. Uh, many of them have had other biology courses, genetics courses, and chemistry. And the summer forensics workshop, it's a pretty intense workshop. They're here four days a week, 10 to 5 o'clock and they get an hour for lunch, that's it. They're working the rest of the time and they've had to learn many different scientific forensic techniques that are needed in the courtroom for forensic analysis in the courtroom. So they've learned blood typing, for example. They've learned fingerprint analysis, digital fingerprint analysis, as well as DNA fingerprinting analysis, which is a little bit different. They've done these procedures already. They've done hair analysis, so they know how to look in a microscope, look at different hair slides, look at casts of hairs to see different hairs, be able to identify one hair from another, for example. They've done um, odontology, where they had to make casts of their teeth. Everybody has a cast of their teeth, professors and students as well. They um, have taken measurements on tooth casts and learned how to analyze dental samples, okay? And, and learn the applications of that in identifying, for example, burnt bodies from plane crashes where they can only find the teeth, okay? They do bone analysis, they do fiber analysis, anything that can be picked up at a crime scene. Well, what I'd like to speak about is that the fact is that you can get a really good hands-on education, especially at any CUNY college. The students are very challenged and you can learn a whole bunch, a whole sort of things from, you know, there's so many different fields you can learn from. And starting at a community college, if you're a really serious student, because you have your folks who are not real about their education, it's like, oh yeah, I'm coming to college, and, and you know, it's all fun. But it's not all fun, it's real work, it's real hard work, not only just for the students, for the professors themselves. Professors give a lot of themselves to the student, and the students equally, if they're serious, 
they need to apply themselves as well. So it's not really a waste of time on anybody's part. So I, I would say that having community colleges, yes, they do provide you with the knowledge, with the experiential learning process. It's up to the individual to step up to the plate if they're truly serious. Take a few out of the box. We don't have to be really sterile on this.